If you're new to my YouTube channel, please click that subscribe button and remember to click the bell icon to get notifications of all my uploads throughout the week. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So it's the start of a new month and my thank you cards are almost depleted. So time to make some more. So I thought this morning, uh, it's Monday morning, um, that I would utilise some of the quote blocks that I recently popped onto my website. So it's three sheets, to move those bits of cards look out the way. There's three sheets and there's eight on each one. So there's eight different ones on each of the sheets. So three sheets of eight quote blocks. That's 24 quote blocks in total. And they've got that kind of nice vintage paper or lined kind of backgrounds to them. And I've used uh, a really nice kind of distressed um, typewriter font for them. So that's what I'm going to use today. So I've printed them off already and cut them out because that's, you know, nobody wants to sit and watch me cutting out squares of paper or card. But I have printed them onto a little heavier cardstock. So probably just normal, normal kind of thinnish cardstock or heavyweight paper. It doesn't really matter what weight it is, as long as it's a little bit weightier than ordinary paper for the purposes that I want to use them for. And I'm not going to create 24 cards this time. I'm only going to create um, 10. I've cut 10 squares of watercolour cardstock. This is 300 GSM or 140 pound watercolour cardstock and I've already started to go around the edges just to kind of scruff them up a little bit just to give them a little bit more texture on the edges. So that's what I'm going to start off with today. So as normal with my um, with my thank you cards I normally start one and then I'll go off and do the rest. So it's going to be the similar sort of process for each one but the backgrounds are going to be different. So for the background at this time because I've got watercolour cardstock I thought I would actually use some watercolours but not your ordinary watercolours. I'm going to use the Brushos. Um, these are um, made by a British company um, not far away from here actually in Sheffield and where the steel comes from, Sheffield Steel. Um, but these are very very similar to the Ken Oliver colour bursts and other pigment based watercolours. So I've taken out of my collection, I've got four colours. I've got leaf green, I've got turquoise, I've got ultramarine, which is another blue, but I also have a little bit of dark brown. Now, the reason I've got the dark brown is to add just a touch of um, vintage to it because I am going to distress the edges of both these cards and also my quote bo blocks because they've also got that kind of vintage papery effect behind them. So I want to, co to combine so like blues, greens and kind of vintagey browns today. So that's the plan. So with these colour bursts, or sorry the brush shows, uh, different brands are available. Uh -huh. um, you can do them in one of two different ways. You can either spritz with water onto your watercolour card first, then sprinkle your brush shows, or you can sprinkle the brush shows and then add water. Um, I'm going to sprinkle with water first, let it sit for a second and then I'm going to tap the brush out on. Just let that, because it's starting to curl a little bit, but it's mixing. And then I'm going to grab the ultramarine. that purpley colour, which is not necessarily my favourite, but I wanted a little bit of a contrast. And then I'm going to grab the leaf green. It's almost like magic, isn't it? Ooh, I think we're going to need just to open that hole up a little bit more. I can't find my pokey tool anywhere. It's probably buried under a mountain of paper. My craft room isn't exactly tidy at the minute. So I'm going to drop some of that green, which is a mixture 
of greens and yellows in there. Which is nice. And then a piece of kitchen roll. I'm just going to take the edge of the kitchen roll and just soak up that colour that's pooling because I don't really want great big globules of colour. Now if the water's not mixing I can always just go back in and just add a touch more. And again I'm just going to grab that excess water from the edge and then lift that up and then I can just soak that up quickly. This isn't going to be a quick process today. And then while I'm going to put the pin back in that leaf green and then I'm going to get a little bit of the brown I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit, a little bit too much on the edges there, I think. There we go. And let's pick up that excess. All I'm doing is just gently touching the kitchen roll. That is extremely dark brown, isn't it? Just touching the kitchen roll into it and that's just lifting some of that pigment out of there but it just adds that real nice kind of um, darkness to it. Okay so I'm just going to lift that up and see if I can clean that off. Drop it back down. This is where your fingers get completely filthy and then grab my heat gun and then I'm going to give that a blast okay so that is now dry and as you can see all those colors have intermingled almost looks like a kind of galaxy doesn't it so I'm happy with the way that looks edges are just slightly a touch damp which is fine but by the time I get to um, Finishing off all the ten, I should imagine, or the other nine, they will be all done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a combination of the different colours. Um, rather than put all four onto every single one, I'm probably just going to mix and match throughout. So I'm going to go away and do the rest of them. Now you've seen me do that one, and then when, I'm, when I've finished all ten and they're all dry, I'll come back. Okay, so I've done all... 10. As you can see I've varied the colours on some, um, had a bit of a play, splash in different colours all over the place and got a rather yummy run on that one. So I've brushed them all off because sometimes you still get granules of the pigments that haven't dissolved but there you go. So they're all now done. I'm going to take some vintage photo. Let's just clear away Let's do this one there and then I'm just going to go around and kind of distress up the edge go all the way, unify some of those colours together, just catching the edge as I'm going. Because you can choose a sympathetic colour to go around the edge if you're doing this. That's if you do try and recreate. That's a nice one. Let's try that one. Uh, it just brings all the colours together, it gives it a nice dark kind of border all the way around. Just finish this one off and then I'll go away and do all of the others. That also gets rid of any of those white edges that we might have had lurking. 
There we go. So I'm going to do the rest now. I'm going to carry on and do all ten. And then I will join with you again right back at the end. Well, maybe not at the end, but when I finish doing these. Well, you know what I mean anyway. Okay, so I've gone round and distressed all of the edges on every single one. Pay particular attention to the corners and stuff. And they've all started to um, look exactly how I wanted them to. So nice little dark borders and frame of grungy, lovely vintage-ness -ness -ness all the way around. Okay, so that's the ten coloured backgrounds sorted. I now have to choose ten of these and do the same thing. So I'll just grab that first one. And again, I'm going to go around on each one and just distress all of the edges, add distress ink all the way around. Like so. And I need 10 of these doing. So now you've seen me do the couple. I will do the other eight and I will join with you when they're complete. So as you can see I've gone around all of the edges distressing it and making it a bit more grungy. Let's just bring in one of those sheets there so you can see now that with those dark edges around the background and the dark edges there it's starting to kind of pull itself together. But you've seen all these pieces of book text as well. What I want to do is to add just a couple of pieces of book text just behind each one. Just tucked in the corners, just like that, just to kind of break it up a little bit. But as you can see, I've already made a start. I need to distress all of the edges of these little pieces of book text, torn fragments of book text. And because I want to add two to each card, that means I have to do 20. So as you can see, I'm just quickly going around adding that vintage photo just all the way around the edges. Not going to take long to do. So you've seen me do a couple. I shall do all 20 and then I'll be right back. Okay, so all of my book text is done. So all I'm going to do is just grab a quick glue stick. Well, a quick glue stick. Glue sticks aren't quick. But you know what I mean. Little collage glue stick. And I'm going to work out where I want to put it on there and then bottom corner like so and then just quickly run over the back Don't particularly want to use wet glue because I'm not sure if it's going to make um, the brush hose react again. Probably won't do, but anyway. So that's one. I'm now going to do the same thing to the other nine and then I'll be right back. Okay, so they're now all stuck down. Pretty cool, huh? But I'm not yet happy with them. I still want to add something else. So what I've got is I've got my pot of indigo blue gold finger which is a gold metallic acrylic paint and I've got my fan brush and I've got somewhere hiding oh one of these days I will tighten this chair up because it's making some awful noises. It's not me and it's certainly not my joints just in case you're wondering. And I'm going to take some of that lovely, beautiful gold paint, put a nice sizable dollop. That's a very good and serviceable word. Add some water. to make it a little bit more fluid than this. Let's 
get that metallic luster really suspended in that water. And then I'm going to bring each of the cards in. And just add a few gold splatters to each one. And I'm going to pop them to one side. And leave them to dry au naturel. That's better. So that's the first few done. Just have to keep adding a little bit of water. Give it a spin and then pop it to one side to dry. while I'm doing the rest. So now you've seen me do these, I'll carry on and I'll join with you when I've done. All those cards are now dry and you can see that that gold is now shimmering in the background on those cards really really nicely just kind of ties it all together and the backgrounds now really do kind of stand out but not so much that they get in the way. I just think they look really really nice. The one that I didn't like the most is now the one that I like the best. Look at that one. So to finish off uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp onto the back. I'm going to use this postcard stamp from Tim Holtz, it's a very early one, as you can see at number 99, so back in the day, I think he's on like 300 or something now. So this is a very, very early stamp set, but I'm going to use this uh, postcard stamp here, and I'm just going to stamp it onto the back. Now, I may not use this as, you know, just kind of like a thank you postcard, just make sure I get it the right way up. Just stamp that onto the back, like so. Um, because I'm going to do it on all of them, but if I want to make a proper card card, I can just put tape on the back or glue it to the front of a card blank if I want to. So I've got the option, I've got that lovely grunginess on the back, to either write something on the back um, and send it out, or just a quick say, you know, a quick thank you, um, or I can turn it into a proper. Um, greetings card and then send that out as a thank you if I want to. I've got the option to do it either way, just make sure I get it the right way up. And I'm just going to stamp on the back of each one. And I'm not all that bothered about getting it exact either. Because, you know, mixed media and all that, we don't have to get it exactly right. Because it's grungy anyway. So I'm going to finish doing the rest of these and then I'll be right back. So each one of those now has been stamped on the back with that postcard. But I could have saved myself two because I already know that I need two cards to send out already. So I'm just going to take those top two and then pop those to one side. And I'm just going to grab some glue. Now I knew that was going to happen. I'll be right back. Okay, blockage resolved. So I'm just going to grab some glue. Maybe not totally resolved. Blocked nozzles. The bane of a crafter's life. That's better. 
better. I know there's way too much on there now, but I right, so just grab a piece of scrap card stock. Do 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 oh, a piece of scrap. Yes, I do have a piece of scrap. It's scrap now. There we go. And then I've got my card blank, which is just a standard sheet of cardstock cut down the middle. So if you're making of doing this in the States, then you'd be using an A2 size. UK and Europe, Australia, it's A6. A4, just cut long ways. So I'm now going to pop that to one side, do this one, and then I'm going to grab a couple of heavy books and just lay it between the books just so that it presses flat and doesn't curl. Way too much glue on there. Way too much glue. So no happy medium at all. It's either not enough coming out or too much. Because double sided tape would have worked just as well, but I wanted to glue it. Grab too quick. Oh, this is turning into an exercise on what not to do. Almost. It's a good job this stuff dries clear, isn't it? There we go. Right, I'm going to go and sandwich those between two big books and then I'll join with you in a little while. So there you go, two fabulous little, well I think fabulous anyway, little thank you cards all ready to go so I just have to write on those and get them posted out and then I have eight more little thank you postcards that can be sent in with parcels or in a little envelope or even just turn into cards like these if I need to. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels without whose generosity and support these videos would not be possible. Thank you.